ATM skimming is a billion dollar problem and growing. We'll discuss this increasing threat and ATM security practices on this edition of the Pulse Debitcast. Welcome to ATM Skimming, new challenges, new responses. This program is the premiere of the Pulse Debitcast, covering trends and developments shaping the debit industry. Our 2012 Debitcast series focuses exclusively on fraud. And joining me today is Eric Lillard, Director of Pulse Fraud Operations, to discuss ATM skimming. Eric, let's set the scene a bit today to talk about ATM skimming. According to the American Bankers Association, a typical ATM heist is going to net criminals thirty to fifty thousand dollars significantly more than a typical bank holdup. So obviously that's one factor driving this increase in ATM skimming. But what else is, is really at the heart of this issue? Well Steve, card skimming is the number one threat against ATMs. Of of all the, the vulnerabilities, card skimming is number one. And I think there's a lot of factors that come into play. And right at the top of the list is the card skimming technology itself. It has matured immensely over the past three years. And during this maturation phase, the technology has uh, embedded increased features and functionality that are appealing to the fraudsters. And coupled with that, the ability to take this data that has been accumulated from the card skimmers, reproduce them onto counterfeited cards, and get them on the streets in very short amount of time makes it a very easy opportunity for the fraudsters to get in the business. The Technology, as it's gone through its evolution, has a lot of ease of use capabilities that make it much easier for people to be able to get into this business. For instance, wireless technology has increased and it has become easier to set up with the card skimming technologies, making it easier for the fraudsters to be able to remotely monitor the activities of these devices, rather than having to have this physical presence uh, and, and more risk associated with it. In addition to that, the integration of micro cameras has made it easier and harder to detect when the cameras are physically placed in the areas around the ATM itself. Placed strategically, whether they're over the shoulder or above, in hard to locate positions to be able to capture the, the card holder typing in their pen. So these are some of the dynamics, I believe, that are playing into this. But certainly there are some things outside the technology itself that I think are important to consider too. For instance, the economic conditions over the past several years has been tough on everybody. And it's probably pushed individuals to places that maybe they wouldn't have gone before. And uh, the ability to uh, have access to this technology at reduced costs um, and in some cases, quite honestly, sad but true, not having as much fear of becoming a felon has made it just a, a very interesting situation. Uh, so I think these are uh, some of the reasons that have played into this increase. Kind of sounds like the perfect storm of factors, unfortunately. So what should financial institutions be doing today to protect themselves against these ATM attacks? Well, so there's a few things that absolutely they should be doing. And I would suggest, number one, a physical security review program is imperative. And through this program, it should be the financial institution's um, practice to conduct a physical uh, checking, if you will, of the ATM devices, looking for tampering, looking for anything unusual, and having a checklist so that it's a very consistent process, if you will, to, to validate that. That sounds very basic, but it is very important. And um, there's, it, it could become just a part of, of the natural practice to, to be able to do that. And I would say one of the other things, Steve, that is, is perhaps could be done, and I mentioned before the uh, leveraging the wireless technology. This is a key part of some of the more advanced um, card skimmers that are onto the market. So I would suggest that a financial institution should understand what the wireless footprint of their ATM looks like on a normal day. This can be done very easily. Um, smartphones, you can have free applications that you can li literally put it in the air and it will tell you what wireless networks it detects. So if you make it part of your physical inspection program of the ATMs, you know what the normal footprint looks like. If you see a new wireless network 
on a different day. That could be an early indicator of something that you just might want to put into your review process. So that's, that's one area uh, that I would suggest. Um, operationally speaking, there's some key procedures that, uh, that a financial institution should uh, incorporate into their, their policies. For instance, um, making sure that if you have teams that are responsible for reviewing fraud alerts, that these teams, that these people are disciplined to look at these alerts in a timely manner and making sure that you are reviewing the alert, contacting the cardholder if needed, because what we'll see in the ATM skimming um, security area where breaches occur is test transactions may be done on the front, front end of a much bigger event that's going to happen. So. Pulse, as an example, and I would also say probably many processors and internal FIs, but certainly Pulse has this in place. We have strategic rules that are designed to detect these early warning signals. And so through our notification to our FIs, we try and position them to be able to catch fraud on the very front end, detect these lower testing transactions so that it can prevent the followed by fraud, which is much bigger in, in, in losses to the financial institution. And then lastly, uh, what, what I would suggest that any FI do is make sure that you understand holistically what capabilities and tools you have available to you by way of your fraud mitigation systems. So for instance, Pulse, we offer Debit Protect. And through Debit Protect, we proactively develop network rules that are designed to look for emerging fraud trends in the industry. This is our job. We do this on behalf of our clients. So understanding those and also linking those to your organization's tolerance for, for risk, these two things have to work together. And so being pre pro proactive in that is, is very important. And understanding what the process should be for reporting fraud. It's, it's not uncommon for fraud to occur, and it's kind of like the first time it's ever happened. It's disorganized in how you approach it. And so I would also... Um, advocate uh, a financial institution defining formally a fraud incident response process and developing metrics around what you do and, and being able to tie those back into um, to the fraud rules that can be deployed. Eric, a great checklist of what financial institutions should be doing today. Let's talk future state for a minute. Are there advances in hardware or software on the horizon that you think can be part of the solution? So one of the, the um, hardware capabilities that's in place today. It's not new, but it is effective, and that's the use of the jitter technology. So jitter technology works in the sense that, as, as and it doesn't work in all card readers. So these, these work in kind of the drop and insert readers that have motors that actually do the, do the reading of the card. But the start and stop motion of the jitter technology makes it much more difficult to be able, for a skimmer, if it were installed, to be able to capture the data from the magnetic stripe and then be able to copy that to a foreign card for distribution in fraudulent activities. So jitter technology is, is one technique. It, it certainly is not a silver bullet. And quite frankly, there is no silver bullet. Fraud really needs to have a multi-layered approach in, in both people, process technologies, and, and things of that nature to come up with a good solution. Um, in addition to the jitter technology, one of the other things that, that I've seen, it, this is kind of in prototype, referred to as the magic carpet. The magic carpet is, is, is designed so that as the card holder is, is on this carpet, so to speak, it then kind of protects the individual in that if anybody intrudes on their physical space, there's an audible alert. And the purpose behind this is really making sure that there's good physical separation between you typing in your pen and the people that could be shoulder surfing and, and capturing your pen. And so this is, it's, it's not anything that I've seen, but it is a, a, a neat concept. Um, I think more uh, to the heart of, of some real meat and potatoes around this is the EMV technology or the Europay MasterCard Visa standard. And this which has been deployed uh, successfully in, in Western Europe and some other countries, has done magnificent jobs at reducing fraud, particularly as it relates to card skimming. Um, the EMV has been slow to adopt in the US, 
Um, but I do see some recent changes, at least in chatter, if you will, that might suggest that EMV is getting a little bit closer here. And I think that EMV is a good practical solution for getting beyond some of this uh, $1 billion that's associated with, uh, with card skimming fraud. A um, couple of other things just quickly, um, vibration sensors on the ATM. These are add-on units that can be applied to an ATM, and they're designed to be able to de detect if a fraudster has come in and altered, if you will, or tampered the ATM in the installation of a card skimmer. So these are motion sensors, if you will. Eric, thanks for joining us today. And this topic will undoubtedly continue to be part of the discussion on our Debit Protect Forum. A link to this secure discussion community can be found on the homepage of the Pulse website. Check out the site often to learn more about this issue and other fraud-related matters impacting the debit industry. And we are always listening. Email us your questions or suggestions for topics to be covered on the Pulse Debitcast. It's feedback at pulsenetwork.com. Or if you're on Twitter, find us at Pulse Network. Until next time, I'm Steve Sievert. Thank you for joining us today for the Pulse Debitcast.